What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good afternoon. Got a little late jump this morning. Why? Because I woke up around 8 o'clock. I decided to play Call of Duty to about 12.30. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. But I'm here. I got some great, great information. You're not going to want to miss. The BIS and SWIFT just conducted a hackathon. I believe it was over like 46 companies, financial institutions that were involved in this. You are never going to believe who won. I'm going to play you a video clip. It's a little lengthy, but it's okay. It's going to introduce you to ISO 20022. Then it's going to talk about the hackathon. Then it's going to talk about the winner. One of the winners of the hackathon. You're never going to believe it. We'll wait till I tie this all together. But first, before we get going, lights, subscribe, turn on those notifications, hit that bell. Give me a follow on Twitter, XRP News underscore. Here we go. The total crypto market cap. We sit at 1.93 trillion. We are up 2.4% over the last day. Beautiful. I talked about yesterday. XRP had a break above about 62 cents. Well, we got above. We touched 63. We couldn't hold it. So we are currently back down to 61 cent area. All is still good. XRP is going to make another run at it. We're seeing Bitcoin sell off a little bit right now. But hey, XRP is still up 11% in the past seven days. So let's watch this play out. But listen, we're in good shape. We're above 61 cents. We're holding strong. We're going to break that 62, 63, and we're going to continue to shoot up. All right, let's jump into the news. Remember, for the past, past, I don't know, two to three videos, we've been covering with you South uh, South Africa. And there was two, two out of six companies that leverage XRP and on-demand liquidity that were in the runnings of the final six, two out of the final six, to power South Africa and to power their payments. Well, we knew one of them, Mercury FX. We didn't know the other, but I'm pretty sure we found it right here. This video is coming from Stephen Bull at the deep. Give him a follow. He, he says, we started off it. We started off with Bitcoin, but it didn't work because it's too slow. We pivoted to the XRP ledger, and it's obviously turned out to be a good choice because of its speed and cost of transactions. This is coming from two of the Two of the top guys at, at Zygo, which comes from Cape Town, South Africa. And this video was just from February 2021. It's a minute 41. Have a listen to this. We decided to use blockchain to uh, do the settlement for this. Uh, we started off with Bitcoin, of course, which didn't work. It was just too slow. And pivoted over to, to the XRP ledger um, to, to use the, um, you know, for, for the settlement rail. Um, it turned out to be a good choice, and uh, obviously because of the speed and, and the, uh, um, the cost of, of the transactions uh, and the throughput, which uh, absolutely works for a retail environment. Yeah. What is the exact cost of transaction using Zago? Well, not, a, not a difficult question, actually, so I'm one I'm prepared to do. So, that's, so um, <laughs> if you want to move money from... You want to put, you want to put rand into here and send it to Bitmama in Nigeria. It's going to cost you 0.25 percent. And you compare that to a bank, which is going to be typically between four and nine percent. Hmm. And then you can see it straight away why the benefit is. Second part of the benefit is it will be there if we're unlucky, five seconds. If we're <laughs> lucky, less than four. <laughs> now you're talking about so, speed right now. Yeah, definitely. So speed is a very important part of our, the Zago message. We, if you put a transaction in right now and say send it to Bitmama, it will be in Bitmama in four seconds. Four seconds. Yeah. On a on a good day, it could be lower than that. <laughs> so on a bad that, day, that's a bad on a good day. day. A bad day, maybe five, maybe it, five. It, it actually averages at three point eight seconds. Oh, interesting. Did you hear this? These guys. <clears throat> from Zago are making fun of Bitcoin and they're, they're making a laugh out of how quick the XRP ledger is. They said on a good day, four seconds and that money's gonna be moved and settled, it's gonna be there. They said on a bad day, it takes five seconds. Are you kidding me? This is one prime example of what is going to happen. This is why Bitcoin is now considered a store of value. It never was gonna make it as a payment mechanism. Zygo is laughing at Bitcoin and how slow it was. So who is Zygo? Here we go. Zygo's website, people. 
The Zygo Gateway provides an entry point into the Ripple network. We enable customers to transfer assets, both fiat and digi digital, locally and internationally using the Ripple network. XRP is a native digital asset of the XRP ledger and can be freely sent and exchanged among XRP addresses. This makes XRP a convenient bridge currency. Zago uses the XRP ledger as a, dig as a distributed exchange where users can exchange XRP for Zar. This is absolutely tremendous. I believe this is the other company that is fighting to get the South, um, uh, South African Payments Corridor locked in. Them and Mercury FX. I love the chances that we have. And it would be, it would, it would just be groundbreaking. It's XRP taking over that whole entire corridor. All right, we're going to move over. We're going to get into the good stuff. This is what you came here for. This is going to be the thumbnail of the video. Listen very closely. This comes from hand underscore banana. I believe Bank XRP and possibly others mentioned this already, but last month, the Bank of International Settlements ran a tech sprint competition. Mojo Loop won the competitions for solutions to handle the last mile settlement for cross-border payments. I'm going to play this clip. It's about four minutes of listening. It is worth it. The whole video is 20 minutes. I'm only going to play four minutes. We're going to go into, or they're going to go into what ISO 20022 is. Then they're going to talk about the competition. And then you're going to hear Mojo Loop explain what they do how they do it how they leverage the interledger protocol how they get finality how they can move money instantly at the ends of the payments as well remember this is from the bis who we just heard from augustine carson yesterday talking about what sounds like xrp to me and we know that brad gollinghouse was in front of a massive panel with him on board and swift which is very interesting. I'm gonna start this clip here at two minutes. As I said, it's four minutes. Hang in there. You don't want to miss this. And then we're gonna go over what Mojo Loop is doing with ISO 20022 and the ILP and how XRP is linked into all of this. Here we go. And invoices issued. ISO 2022 is being implemented around the world in both domestic payment systems and cross border services such as those offered by SWIFT. So it's time for the payments industry to get ready to take advantage of data-rich payments. The Summit Hackathon was a huge success. Our esteemed panel of judges from central banks, industry, and payment system operators had the extremely hard task of scoring 45 high-quality proposals. And I want to thank all the participants for their time, their commitment, and their hard work over the last few weeks. With that said, we are now ready to announce the three winners of the BIS Innovation Hub SWIFT ISO 20022 Hackathon. Drum roll, please. One award goes to Team Mojaloop for their solution on how to use 20022 to handle the last mile, bringing cross-border payments to the many users in emerging markets who rely on mobile money transfer systems. Judges like the impact that this proposal could have on the inclusiveness of cross-border payments. Over to you, Team Mojulu. Thank you, Andrew. It's an honor to be chosen as one of the hackathon winners. The Mojulu Foundation is a nonprofit open source foundation founded in 2020, hosting instant payments clearing infrastructure as a digital public good supporting financial inclusion growth. Let's set the scene. 80% of the cost of cross-border payments is in the last mile delivery of money. Today, there are existing last mile payment networks to tap into. The mobile money industry sprang into life over 10 years ago, focusing on delivering efficient digital low cost accounts to those unable to access financial services. And there is a vibrant global diaspora who regularly send money home, as well as many donor agencies who remit social payments. Our hypothesis is that fragmentation leads to high costs and delays in receiving money when things go wrong. Our submission demonstrates how using ISO 222 messages in the Moduli Pay APIs we're able to connect traditional market participants with the many different account holding institutions in the developing world's financial ecosystem. To do this, we map the Moduli three-step transaction pattern onto ISO 222 messages and leverage the Interledger protocol to include end-to-end -end data elements that connect these disparate systems. The Moduli three-step transaction pattern allows a data agent to firstly, discover if the creditor identifier they have, such as a mobile number, identifies a valid creditor account to which they can route a payment. 
Secondly, agree the terms of the payment with the ultimate creditor agent. And finally, execute the payment instruction. Modulube systems also use the interledger protocol, which has a cryptographic signature called a fulfillment, which is only produced by the creditor agent when the payment is cleared to the creditor. The fulfillment data element passed end to end from the creditor to the debtor can be relied upon by intermediaries and the creditor itself as a cryptographically verifiable signal that the creditor has been paid. Market infrastructure, such as the moduli clearing system, consider delivery of the fulfillment as a signal of finality and an indicator that the payment may be settled. In our demo, Amanda provides the phone number and the amount to Lake City Bank on our app and does a get quote. Lake City Bank, using a global discovery service, finds out that Equity Bank can play the role of an intermediary, provides the transaction details using a paying 001 message. Equity Bank does a lookup and a transaction agreement with Rwanda Pay, and then relays back the details using a paying 01. Amanda accepts the terms of the payment and proceeds. This results in a PAC 008 message being sent through Equity Bank to Rwanda Pay, with the resulting paying 002 message being received by Amanda's bank as confirmation. One can view the activity logs and view each of the ISO messages, for example, the CAM203 here, which can be opened up and observed. Modulip uses the interledger protocol because of the finality provided by a cryptographic signature in the payment instructions. This facilitates straight through processing without the need for reconciliation and dispute resolution. It avoids the errors that result in delays and costs that poor users can ill afford. It offers first a way for the banked and the unbanked to exchange funds safely, quickly and securely. Second, confidence that payments are being sent to the intended recipient and the funds are being cleared to them. Third, transparency to all parties of the complete terms of the transfer. And finally, certainty for the debtor institution of the finality of credit of payment. We extend the reach of the ILP protocol into the traditional payment market infrastructure by passing the necessary interledger data elements in ISO 20022 messages so that they can be exchanged end to end. We further expand the use of multiple ISO 20022 messages to facilitate a complete three-step transaction, providing a traditional debtor with confidence that their payment is going to the intended recipient and trust in its finality. This submission was prepared by a diverse group of participants in the Mojilip. There you have it. <clears throat> so ISO 20022 is, is still a messaging service, remember that, but it needs a way, and we keep hearing that word finality, right? Finality, finality, finality. It's all we are hearing. And XRP is going to bring that final leg of the payment. And as you, as we already know, what have Stefan Thomas told us about the ILP? The ILP is about all of the money. XRP is handled through the ILP. Yes, the ILP can use any type of currency it wants, but when you look at it at the end of the day and you are connecting up via the Interledger protocol, you're gonna want the fastest, the cheapest, the most secure, and that's gonna be XRP. So now I wanna get back to Hannah Banana's tweets and I wanna read through this tweet thread. One of Mojo Loop's directors is also on Ripple's team as head of social impacts. Not only that, but the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the World Bank, and all others reference the G20 roadmap, which particularly emphasizes on the Bank of International Settlements. Here's the document. Up, oh, my. So that says, at what point do you take a step back and look at all these coincidences and realize that it's all connected? Central bank, digital currencies, private ledgers, partnerships. Here's the mojo loop. An open source real-time payment solution, the world's first open source payment platform for interoperability among real-time payment networks. Through a partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Ripple, we are driving low-cost digital payment services for governments, banks, companies, and people everywhere. And it leverages the I. L P then goes on to say the roadmap is being filed and it looks like they are moving at a faster pace due to COVID-19. Their words, not ours. Says the G20, Central Bank Digital Currency Roadmap tells us everything we need to know regarding the timeline for regular rate regulations. We can read the full document here. Let's pull this up. Building Block 4, Aligning Regulatory Supervisory and Oversight Frameworks for Cross-Border Payments. Let's blow this up. Says the FSB, to coordinate among, among, what happened here? We lost it again. I clicked it too fast. But all right, so we, 
I won't go over it. I won't read it all. You probably can't read it on the screen. But listen, it's action one is going to be between October 2020 and October 2021. That's where we are. Then action two, which steps in from October 2021, which is later this year, about seven months from now, to March 2022. But as all of this wraps up in September 2023, which is about two and a half years from now. Action two is addressing gaps, all areas for alignment, existing inter international regulatory, supervisory, and oversight standards and guidance for cross-border payments. We come back down to Hannah's Bananas tweets. And what else are we going to find out? This is how, so how some of you do not understand what is taking place. Mojo Loop and the ILP is going to play a huge role in cross-border payments and settlement. Stefan Thomas talked about the ILP years ago and how its goal is to handle all of the money. We then jump over to this news article, which covers the Mojo Loop wins the ISO 20022 hackathon hosted by the BIS. Are Ripple and XRP involved? says, as the official press release states, the winners present solutions for synchronizing foreign exchange payments, bridging the last mile, which we have heard Chris and Brad talk about for many years, bridging the last mile across border payments and resolving data correction and validation difficulties. All three winning solutions will be presented to a global audience at the BIS Innovation Summit 2020, 2021, excuse me, including key payment industry players and central banks. The winners was selected by a panel of experts, okay? Listen to this panel of experts and tell me if you have never heard of them with their involvement with Ripple, Bank of England, Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure, DBS Bank Singapore, European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve System, Innovative Finance UK, New Payments Platform Australia, Payments Canada, SWIFT, and SWISH, which is from Sweden, and Mojo Loop was the winner. As we scroll down, as part of this proposed solution, Mojo, Droop, Mojo Loop relies on the ILP, the Interledger Protocol, which was developed by Stefan Thomas, who is a former CTO of Ripple and current CEO of Coil. The Mojo Loop Foundation's mission is to promote financial inclusion, and Coil is one of its initial supporting members, along with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Google, Modus Box, Omender Network, and the Rockefeller Foundation. While the ILP is not tied to any single company, blockchain, or currency, it is closely related to Ripple and XRP, providing an interface to the XRP ledger. In addition, Mojo Loop has a close relationship with Ripple Labs as the company joined the foundation's board of directors last September. You don't see Bitcoin, you don't see Ethereum, you don't see Litecoin, you don't see Cardano sitting on the board of directors for Mojo Loop. Now, do you? No, but you see Ripple. And you see the ILP, which was developed by the former CTO of Ripple, being used by the Mojo Loop. You then see the BIS doing a hackathon and Mojo Loop winning. Do you not see how everything is tied in? All we are starting to hear is how we need to, to develop a system or, or use a currency or use a digital asset that can bridge the last mile of payments. That is XRP. Brad and Chris drove this into your head three to four years ago. Everything is playing out. You need to ignore the FUD on Twitter. You need to realize what you are holding. These coins like XRP that actually have a real use case are going to win in the long run. You might not see it in price right now, but listen, let everything get built out. When everything is built down, utility kicks in is when you're going to get price action. And you're going to get price action that is actually going to stick. You need to know what you hold, people. Our time is coming. That's going to do it for me. I'm going to leave it right there. I don't want to keep you too long on your Saturday. I already went over the time limit that I, I wanted to go over. But listen, wash your damn hands. Be nice. Be kind to each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.